So, uh, Dr. Aaron Imbar is uh, founder and uh, CEO of Prisma Photonics uh since uh, 2017 uh prisma prisma photonics is uh, using next generation fiber sensing technology to monitor uh, long uh, uh, stretched utilities uh before uh, the aaron uh, aaron founded the company he was also the ceo and founder of v gene uh, and he was one of the dominant players in the fiber laser field. Um, Aaron is holding a, a PhD in physical electronics from Tel Aviv University. Uh, he has also many patents relating to novel laser design. Uh, and uh, by the way, Aaron is also an enthusiastic triathlete. So he's a sportsman. Uh, uh, so uh, Aaron, if you are with us, please, uh, microphone is yours. Tommy, thank you very much for the kind introduction. And now we would go to something completely different. Most of the talk here is speaking about advanced optical communication. And now we will speak about how we can use this infrastructure in order to use it to sense physical infrastructure or to, ten, to turn physical infrastructure into smart infrastructure. And I will, I will uh, start the, the story with the story of Tower 27. Tower 27 is part of the backbone of the electrical transmission line of the state of California. And if you can take a look at the picture, you would see that it's not like, it's not looking like a modern tower. And the truth is that it's 100 years old tower. And in order to understand why we're speaking about this tower, I would take you something like two years ago into the morning of November 8, 2018. And during this morning, uh, a, live, a live wire in this tower was broke free from its grip. And as you can guess, this of course caused an electrical failure. The impact of this failure was not very significant. Eventually it's caused, it's only affecting a single customer. So as for the grid itself, not a critical issue. But if we're looking at the side effect of this event, it was catastrophic. Few minutes after the, uh, uh, the failure, it started a wildfire and it was one of the wildest wildfire in California. So eventually we having a 100 years old tower starting a fire, the fire is propagating in an extreme uh, speed of something like 250 kilometers per, per hour. And the lovely town of Paradise was burned down in just four hours. Eventually this event caused 85 uh, casualties and eventually 620 square kilometer were burned, were burned completely. Just to give a scope here, it's four times the size of Ljubljana and more than $8 billion in insured losses during this event. So this is just an example and I guess it's giving like an intuition why we need to monitor uh, physical infrastructure, long physical infrastructure. And you know, power line is just one example and the risk of fire is just one sub example for this. We will cover many examples later on in the presentation. But I would mention that detecting fault in power line, it's not an easy task. Mainly when you speak about very long line, when we are speaking about tens, hundreds and thousands of kilometer. When we're speaking about very long infrastructure, when we're looking at regular sensing technologies, the concept of IoT, that's mean, let's put sensors along the infrastructure and let's deliver energy to these sensors and let's transmit information from the sensor and let's build a network. When we're speaking about hundreds and thousands of kilometers, it's become very expensive very cumbersome and eventually not a practical solution. If we would go to the other approach of doing surveillance, 
like manual patrol, UAV, once again, doing patrols of thousands of kilometers, once again, not practical, and definitely it will not give us 100% coverage 24 seven. What we are here saying that fiber sensing along power, power line solves all those issues. It's very high sensitivity uh, detection solution, and it's a very simple installation over hundreds of kilometers. And the first question is, where can we find fibers along high voltage transmission line? The answer is that it become very popular. In the last 20 years, there's been a very strong upgrade in which fiber are being installed in electrical transmission line. As you can see in the picture here, the progress of replacing the upper cable, this is the grounding cable with a new type of cable that contain fiber optics enable utilities, power utilities to have fiber optics network. And what is the motivation why they're doing it? They probably have the strongest motivation. It's revenue generator. With this fiber optics, they can generate new type of revenues from telecom companies. And this is very strong and that's why it's very, very popular in power, in, in a electrical transmission lines. But we can find fiber in almost any kind of uh, long infrastructure that we can think of. Oil and gas pipeline and even water pipeline. Today, the practice is that in installation, you will put an optical cable as part of the, uh, of the infrastructure. It can be for the utility use, or once again, can be a future revenue generator. In highways, there is a modernization process in which fibers are being installed along highways. Railways were the, probably the first infrastructure to massively adopt fiber along railways. And of course, subsea infrastructure and many other examples. Let's speak a little bit about uh, the fiber sensing concept. So we mentioned that I would say the, the standard concept of IoT, of the Internet of Things, of using many sensors that we will build from them a network is really not making sense when we're speaking about hundreds and thousands of kilometers. It's very expensive and the ramp up, ramp up time is very, very long. What we're speaking about is a technology that we call it a sensor-free technology, a sensor-free solution. What is sensor-free? We're meaning that you don't need to install anything along the infrastructure. So what would be the sensor? What we will use in order to sense the infrastructure? And the answer is that we will use the pre-existing fibers. We will use the fibers that originally were installed for communication. Nobody thought about sensing when installing them, but still we can use them. And as you can see in the, in the, uh, in the drawing here, just by plugging a system into this fiber uh, optic network, this pre-existing network, a single system can turn 100 kilometer of fiber into high precision sensor. So the only installation you need in this concept is a single system every 100 kilometer with a very simple integration. Just plug it into one of the available fibers along the network. It's called distributed acoustic sensing and thus is the terminology. Let's try to explain how we can use fiber as sensors. So as we mentioned, the, the connectivity or the installation is quite simple. We are plugging the system, which is called optical interrogator, to one of the available fiber in the, in the cable. As you probably know, in a standard communication type cable, you can find tens of fibers and uh, usually the standard today would be around 100 fibers per cable. And what we will need is just a single fiber. And we need to connect from just one side. We don't need to connect from both sides. And what we are doing is transmitting light into the fiber, short pulses, pulses of laser light into the fiber in a very similar manner to what's done in optical communication. 
What we are taking advantage of is the fact that the fiber is very transparent, is probably the most transparent material that you know the mankind manufacture, but still it's not 100% transparent. As you probably know, in optical communication, you need to put an amplifier every few tens of kilometer, and this is mainly due to that, the attenuation of light over the fiber. But what is the main cause of attenuation? The main cause for 95% of the attenuation is scattering. And when light is scattered to all direction, part of it is scattered back into the fiber and delivered back into the system. And this is the concept. When I'm transmitting light into the fiber, I would get from every point and point along the fiber, a small portion of light back. And now let's assume that I would like to send something. And in the example here, let's assume that I would like to send someone digging 10, 20 meters away from the fiber, away from the infrastructure. Just by digging in the ground, the, the, the event is generating acoustical signals, like seismical waves. And those waves propagating into the fiber will affect the light. There would be a slight change in the phase and amplitude of the light. And that's what we're looking for. That's what we're trying to detect, this, this, uh, this signature. So basically, we can do three things. First of all, we can know that there is an event. We can detect an event. Then we can localize it. We can know the exact location of the event along the fiber in a resolution of a few meters, because we know the time passing passed from transmitting the light and collecting it back. But more important, we can do a classification. We can detect the signature. And as you can guess, you know, person uh, digging would generate different acoustical or seismical waves from someone walking or from a vehicle or from a leakage from an oil or gas pipeline or from a failure from electrical network. So each one of them has a unique pattern. And this is, I would say, what we're calling the next generation of fiber sensing, not just the ability to detect as in the first generation, but to do a very deep classification and know what type of event it is. And this is very important. I will touch in more details later on about this fact. Just a brief about uh, Prisma Photonics. The company was funded at 2017 and our sole and exclusive focus is innovating the next generation of fiber sensor for smart infrastructure. The company is an expert team with a proven tech record of building and scaling companies in the laser domain and deep technology. And we are already in revenue stage. That means that we passed the stage of you know, validation, demonstration, and already uh, deploy uh, commercially available systems. And we are covering wide variety of infrastructure. Here's just a glance about the different type of infrastructure. We started with an example about electrical transmission line, but other domains that are also highly relevant would be oil and gas pipeline, perimeter controls, subsea infrastructure, smart roads, how can transfer a highway into a smart highway, physical cyber security of optical network, and railways monitoring. All of those domains can be analyzed and can be monitored using the concept of fiber sensing. Over the years, since presenting the technology, I would say that we won multiple industry award that you know give us like a back, uh, uh, give us like a, a, a good industry feedback about the innovation that this solution is bringing into the market. Let's speak a little bit about what is the sensor-free solution. So first of all, it's destructive solution for physical infrastructure. And I gave just the first example of detecting fire or detecting electrical failures along transmission line, but it's covering wide variety of use cases from safety to security to preventive and predictive maintenance. All of them can be 
monitored with the same single system. And we have an AI or machine learning based classification of event. This is critical in order to go and to reach, I would say what we're calling a zero false alarm rate, which is critical for, I would say, an operational uh, um, mode of, uh, of utilities. Another important thing is the ability to leverage pre-existing fiber cables. Those fiber were installed, a lot of money was uh, uh, invested in, in the fiber installation, but it was done for the communication and they are there. So we can turn an existing asset and generate a completely new value out of uh, this asset. And the fact that the fiber is the sensor, we mean that we don't need to install any sensor along the infrastructure. Another impact is the ramp up time. You know, think about the ramp up time if I need to dig an infrastructure and to play sensor along 100 kilometers, that can take you know, weeks, months, or even years. Now the alternative is to come and plug the system into the fiber and that's it. A single system can turn 100 kilometer of fiber into smart infrastructure. And the last thing, it's not only bringing innovation you know, from the technology side, it also can change the business model. Since we don't need to uh, install anything along the infrastructure, we don't have a lot of upfront investment and cost. And therefore we can offer the solution in a service model. So if, if up until now, a utility, when they thought about smart infrastructure or transforming the existing infrastructure to smart and monitored one, it was a big commitment a few years ahead with a huge investment. We can come and say, this is a service model business, no need for upfront commitment. And you can work in what we call pay as you grow. So you can install a single system or two system. And with a very reasonable monthly fee, you can start and understand, test the system and see the value, gain confidence, and then take a decision to go step by step from a single system to tens or hundreds of system to cover the infrastructure with very, very minimal risk and practically zero upfront commitments. I touched the aspect of classification, which is one of the pillars of what we're calling next generation fiber sensing. And this is very critical. How we can turn those complicated seismic maps into something very clear that the user uh, can see, just giving him what type of events is happening and where it is happening. We need to understand that the, the uh, long physical infrastructure are in the public domain. They can be close to cities or highways or railways or, or uh, any other domain that would generate a lot of event, part of them relevant, part of them not relevant to the user. And if you don't know how to precisely classify it in between those two, you will just flood the user with a huge amount of irrelevant information and practically he cannot use the system effectively. So this is a very critical aspect in making this technology really effective. If we're looking at the schematic installation of the system, well, the idea is that the system as for the deep technology is very complicated, but for the user, it should be very, very simple. So a, sing a single system can monitor 100 kilometer. If we are going back to the example of electrical transmission line, we're speaking about few hundreds of electrical tower by a single system. And all the data is injected into a single command and control room. So if you are the user, what you would see basically is a map with your infrastructure and the table of events, and you will know what's happening. You will know the, uh, the history. You can do analysis, that's it. You don't need to dive into all those advanced deep tech aspects. And the, the schematic uh, installation is simple. Also, where do we place the system? So it's quite simple because when you have a fiber optic uh, network, 
if you are in utility and you have fiber optic network, then every few tens of kilometer, you have a substation with communication room. And this is the exact location that we will put our system also. So every 100 kilometer, the system will be placed in the command in the communication room. On one hand, we will plug it into the power supply. The other hand, plug it into one of the available fiber and that's it, that's a complete installation. And why this technology is a game changer? So I will summarize a few uh, uh, inputs that I gave over the, the, the previous slide. First of all, the fact that it's sensor free, the fact that we are not touching the, uh, the infrastructure and we are not installing any aspect of the infrastructure, this is cost and, 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 and schedule, but also all the aspect of compat compatibility between the infrastructure and the sensor, all of them, you don't need to deal with it. We're not touching it. The other aspect is that the sensor that we're using is fiber. The fiber is the sensor. So we're having one of the most reliable sensor ever. It's a passive fiber. We, know, we don't need to supply power to it. Extremely reliable. The lifetime is almost, it's also un, it's, uh, almost unlimited. And the last thing, it's a pre-existing fiber. So we don't even need to install it. The next aspect is the ramp up time. So in, in a matter of few hours, we can do a POC. In a matter of a few days, we can do a commercial deployment. The last thing is that maybe you would choose the system for a specific use case. Maybe you would like to detect fire along electrical grids. But this system can give you a lot of other values, like detecting failure or doing predictive maintenance or protect from vandalism and many other use cases. So it's a one platform with multiple use cases. And it's disruptive technology that for the first time by using ultra, ultra sensitive uh, fiber sensing, we can use pre-existing fibers that many of them are not suitable for sensing. They are in conduit, they are quite isolated seismically or acoustically from the environment. Still, the, the, the solution that we offer is so sensitive that unlike other fiber sensing solutions, we can use almost any kind of pre-existing fiber. And this is very important. If as a utility, you need to install a new fiber, it becomes a completely much more expensive and complicated and the ramp up time would be long. So all the benefit of this technology is using a pre-existing fiber. And this is once again, very unique to our solution. And the last thing that all those feature above allow us to switch from an old CAPEX model into a modern service model with a pay-as-you-grow approach. Let's go to a few real-world examples and show some, some results and some data that would maybe give shade a little bit more light about the solution. So let's first take a look about how the next generation results is looking when you compare it to the first generation. So on the left side, you're seeing a typical DAS system. And on the right side, you're seeing Prisma Photonic Hyperscan technology. And this is, this is called a waterfall. This is a way to present seismic maps. This, the Y is the time axis, and this is the location along the fiber. And what we have here is someone walking 30 meters from a buried fiber. So quite along from the fiber, very weak signals. And we can see four steps. And you can see how clear those four steps on the ground and what, uh, how, how good is the contrast. So you can easily detect each step and step in the ground. When you compare such a weak signal with existing technology, you can see that it's very hard to see. You don't even see the steps at all in those. Uh, scenarios. Even if we were going into what's called state-of-the-art phase-sensitive fiber sensing today, it's so noisy. And even if we're going into the best-in-class seismic rate, the, the very high noise level, it's the main generator for high false alarm rate. Let's go to another example. And this is, uh, uh, I would say, uh, one of the holy grail questions of, uh, of sensing in perimeter control and other 
can we differentiate between a person walking and an animal? And this is quite a challenging task. But here, if you look at the seismic map and you see how the step of a human person look like and compare it, for example, to a horse or a boar or a fox, you don't need to be an expert to understand that even the picture itself has unique characteristic that generate a differentiator between one of them. And this is the basic of machine learning. One, once an expert can see the difference, maybe it's hard to do to build a classic algorithm around it, but this is a basic for a very effective machine learning algorithms that can differentiate such a complicated uh, question. Let's go back and speak a little bit about the false alarm rate, why it's so important. And this is results and data that we took from uh, an actual uh, a case study that we did with one of our customer. It's a utility that uh, uh, and gas pipeline utility. And the system was, was installed and we monitor a small segment, a 35 kilometer of gas transmission pipeline. And this is the number of events that we detected in one second. So this is just a picture of one second. And why you see so many events? Because as I mentioned, you, infrastructure are in the public domain and close to this pipeline, there is a highway, there are cities, there are construction sites, there are ag agricultural fields. So there is a lot of happening nearby. And this is a test that we did over a single day, only 24 hours. So the goal was to detect and look for a digger. One of the main concern of pipeline utilities is someone digging close to the pipeline, maybe by mistake, and can cause a catastrophic damage by uh, damaging the, the oil or the gas pipeline. And over 24 hours, there were more than 22,000 events. When we did advanced classification, there were zero diggers. But think about the figures, think about basically what you're looking for is a very rare events. You know, there is event, there is a digger once every few weeks or months, there is a leakage one every few years or more than this, but every day there are tens of thousands of events that you need to classify each one of them. And eventually you need to eliminate them because they are not relevant. So classification is the key factor in order to have an effective uh, monitoring solution for smart infrastructure. I will finish with uh, three examples of uh, uh, different kind of uh, use of our system. So as I mentioned, the system is generic. So the same system can use for different market segment. We spoke a little bit about uh, uh, electricity and pipeline. But there are also other interesting solutions. One of them is, we call it a Prisma Road. It's smart highways or smart roads. How we can turn a road into a smart road. And basically what we would like to detect is first of all, accident in real time. We would like to give an alert in real time about any accident and even about, I would say, risky events. Like if a car stop on the shoulder of the of the highway, we would like to give an alert with, uh, with uh, exact localization. We can measure the speed of the cars and we can measure it for many thousands of cars simultaneously. And we can give an alert for uh, speeding. We can give an alert for, for congestion uh, when the traffic stands still. We can even measure the specific uh, speed and also the average speed and understand what is the flow along the highway. We can even give indication about obstacles like rock falls or, uh, uh, or any kind of obstacle along the, the highway itself. This is another uh, example, which is railway monitoring. And interesting to know the railways industry were the, the first one to adopt 
massive use of fibers along the railways. The bottom line is today you have almost 100% coverage of fiber along most of the railways in the world. And using those fiber, you can uh, do a precise monitoring of the railways and give a lot of uh, relevant information. First of all, the accurate location of the train along the, the highway, along the railway, seems trivial, but you need to know that railways company cannot use GPS technology due to the safety uh, standard. So you don't have today a good way to localize in a high precision the train themselves. You can give indication about rock faults on the highway itself, which also, of course is a huge risk. Every uh, indication about trespassing of, of uh, pedestrian or vehicles. And maybe the bottom line, the most interesting use cases is eventually the ability to increase the number of train or the capacity of the railways without affecting the safety standard of the industry. And this is a very strong motivation. This is probably the strongest motivation. How can I generate more revenues from existing infrastructure without having like additional risk or, uh, um, or any kind of impacts? The last example is going back into electrical transmission line. So we spoke about the ability to detect fire, but there are more than just detecting fire. There are also any kind of, uh, I would say, environmental crisis from lightning strike to extreme wind, but also aspect of failure in the network. It will be surprising to know that today when you have uh, a failure in electrical transmission line that can, you know, put tens or hundreds of people in the dark. You don't know the exact location. You need to send people to travel along the, uh, uh, the transmission line in order to find the location of the failure and think about the storm in the night. You need to find it. It can take many hours and this is critical. And here you can get in real time an indication about the precise location of the events. More than this, you can give an indication about predictive and preventive maintenance. When there are issues of partial breakdowns that can cause losses in the network, or even will be an indication for a future failures, you can deal with them in an early stage, aspect of vandalism and many other use cases. So to summarize, what we present is a complete physical infrastructure solution in what we call in a sense of free approach. The meaning is that we don't need to install anything along the infrastructure. We cover a very wide variety of use cases. Maybe a, a user would, would choose this technology for one of the problems or the pain that he has right now, but it will give much more than this. We will cover safety, security, predictive and preventive maintenance. And it's a award winning solution with already commercial implementation. So I would like to thank you for your attention. Aaron, thank you very much for your excellent presentation. Uh, thank you. It was very, very nice presentation. I think we have time for a few questions. I have uh, two from myself. Um, you mentioned the, the scattering effect. So you are using the scattering effect. Is this a linear or nonlinear scattering? Is this a Rayleigh or, or Raman or Brillouin scattering, which you are using here? Yeah. So great question. I didn't mention it, it's Rayleigh scattering. We're using Rayleigh scattering because it's the strongest phenomenon, which when we use, when you use, I would say, um, smaller effects like Brillouin, in many cases you need to, uh, to integrate over time. And since we mentioned that we would like to do classification, the meaning is that we would like to sample, you know, thousands of times per seconds in a, in a high rate in order to get 
the ability to uh, um, to do a, a spectral uh, image of each one of the event and classify it. So, so somehow you don't monitor the temperature of the fiber. Okay, that's that's another good question. When you're doing Raman effects, you can uh, do an absolute measurement in the uh, of the. Um, Temperature. Of the temperature, exactly. What we can do is temperature changes. So still temperatures changes can be measured with Rayleigh scattering and impact like fire or even leakages that you know uh, change the, the temperature around. So we can use both phenomena, acoustical or seismic and temperature, but not in an absolute method, but rather in a change measurement that changes. Okay, and what, what is the wavelength that you are using? So basically we're working in a very similar manner to the uh, optical communication. We are using the C-band. And I would say more than this, I didn't speak about it, but we, we, we are not using a significant bandwidth. So basically we, we can use a single channel. So if you think about it, if there is no dark fiber, we can walk in parallel with the communication. For many reasons like safety or cybersecurity, there is a tendency to separate between sensing and, and, uh, uh, and communication. But there is, uh, in some cases, we're working mutually communication and sensing on the same fiber. Thank you very much for this. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there is one question in a, in a chat. Uh, does DAS enter instead of stationary, stationary OTDRs? What wavelength windows does it use? So uh, if, if the question is regarding the wavelength, so it's like yeah. around the 1550. So we're walking in the, uh, uh, we're walking in the C band domain. And the main reason is that we would like to achieve the maximum range. If we would like to achieve 100 kilometer, we would like to be in the minimum loss area. So yes, no magic here. You need to walk in the same wavelength in order to get the same properties of the fiber. Okay, thank you. Then I have uh, maybe one or two questions. Uh, you mentioned uh, several use cases and uh, several examples, uh, in, for example, in uh, on roads and railways and power lines, etc. Um, do you have your own uh, installations or uh, solutions uh, in place? Yes, yes. We started, you know, as a company, we, we are a startup, a young startup, started three and a half years ago, but we already switched from the phase of doing proof of concept and pilot into commercial deployments we're mainly working in electrical transmission line, oil and gas pipeline, perimeter control. We started installation in Israel, our backyard with most of the utilities in Israel. And then we started to do deployment in uh, North America, Europe, now approaching Asia Pacific. So we're starting to, to install uh, globally. We're also approaching new markets like smart roads, and subsea infrastructure. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, another question, maybe, uh, <laughs> can you use for uh, in your solutions uh, classical telecom fibers? Yeah, the whole idea is that we're using standard telecom fiber, no speciality fiber, and there is fiber sensing based on speciality fiber, but we think that the main promise that this solution is bringing is that the infrastructure is there. There is, you know better than me, that there is 100 million kilometer of installed fiber optics, standard fiber optics, telecom fiber. We would like to use this asset. We don't want to say to our customer, you need to deploy 1000 kilometer of dedicated fiber. This would change the whole complexity and cost of the solution. And then the following uh, question, uh, if there is no fiber in place. Okay, okay. so there are, there are some, I would say, if you're looking at perimeter control, in many cases you don't have. So if you would like to protect uh, uh, 
a critical asset. If you would like to protect an airport, for example, like large facility, in many cases you don't. And here you're doing the cost cal calculation and still it's much more attractive to do a conventional installation than fiber than installing, I would say, thousands of cameras and building this network because one installation passive components, it's still you know, not as easy as using a, a, a pre-existing pre fiber, but definitely we have customers that don't have fiber doing the cost calculation and saying it's much more cost effective than using cameras and, and other solutions. Okay, thank you. And um, for new fiber, for new fiber uh, installations, which uh, type of fiber you are suggesting? Yeah, so what the, the main factor for us is the type of the cable and the way you install it. As I mentioned, we are not very sensitive to it because the technology is very, very sensitive. So we are not reaching the noise level of the system. Basically, our, what we are measuring is the difference between the target signal to the background. So in signal to background issues, the type of the fiber, the attenuation that would affect both of them is not really critical. But if you have the decision you can choose, really would we would recommend, for example, if you would do a direct buried and not using conduit, you would gain something because conduit is, is attenuation. Gel filled fiber would attenuate uh, a little bit the signals. Metal armoring would do it, but eventually we're coming to the customer and say, okay, those are the, the guidelines. Let's now understand what would better work for you. And usually a customer would say, I would like to use a conduit because that, that's the practice today. And we'd say, okay, we, we will compensate for this 10 to 20 dB of loss of the conduit. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, let me check uh, the last question, I think. Um, yeah, we have another question in chat. Is it possible to detect uh, rodents biting the cable? What do you mean? Rats. Ah. <laughs> yeah, so I would say, well, it's, it's interesting, a new use case, but if you have impact on the fiber itself, like if a rat would try to uh, damage the fiber itself, that's a huge, huge signal. So any movement, even magnetism is, is significantly more uh, uh, powerful and, and more dominant than any acoustical wave close by. So those impact of, you know, movement, even small movement of the fiber that can be done easily. That's, that's huge signals in, in, in our domain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that, that was quite a practical uh, question from the from the field, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is no other question in the chat. I also do not have uh, any more. Uh, in in this case, uh, you can add your final word, Aaron, or we can conclude with the presentation. So basically, that's what I had to present. And I hope that, you know, it's, let's say most of the presentation here is around communication. And, you know, like it's a refreshment to take things to another domain and see what else can be done with the same and existing infrastructure. I hope it was interesting and, and uh, eye-opening for the, for the audience. And would like to thank you for the opportunity to give this presentation in such a conference. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Then uh, I would like to thank you for your great presentation and all answers given. Uh, so your presentation is in uh, proceedings, uh, your uh, co contact as well. So uh, I believe that our audience uh, can contact you directly. Uh, also after the seminar, of course. Um, so thank you very much again for your presentation. Uh, I will now stop the recording. Tommy, thank you very much for the invitation. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much.